The year has begun with the return of swine flu across the country. The first month of the year is not even over yet. And Rajasthan has already reported 56 deaths and the toll could rise further, especially after over a thousand people have tested positive in the state uh, in the screening drive that had been started in the form of a door-to-door -door screening drive by the Rajasthan government in order to contain the disease. Now, as I said, Rajasthan alone has reported 56 deaths since the 1st of January. Two more deaths were reported yesterday. Other instances are being reported from Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. And even in the national capital, it has been confirmed that the number of swine, suspected swine flu cases in the city are on the rise. Now, to tell us more about swine flu and how to keep oneself healthy in the wake of the rising cases and to take your questions on the matter we have with us dr naveen dang director of dr dang's path labs senior cardiologist dr wali and joining us from jaipur we have dr raman sharma who is the nodal officer for swine flu for the government of rajasthan now we know that swine flu is an infection caused by one of the several swine flu influenza viruses with the h1n1 strain being the most common across the country but dr dang why do we see a rise in these cases as the temperature dips? What is it about swine flu that happens? This is an ambient temperature in which this particular virus, which influenza virus, starts multiplying. Either it is in the months of July, August, when there's high humidity and high moisture content, or it is during these months when the mutated virus starts multiplying because of the ambient uh, temperature, ambient atmospheric conditions. So how does one catch swine flu? Uh, it is, as we all know, it is a respiratory virus and it is a droplet infection that is coming in contact with patients who are already carrying this or suffering from this. And when we come in contact with them and we inhale the virus which is being thrown out in the form of droplet infection, that we tend to get this infection. So the symptoms are also the same as the common flu and the cold. The, the, Absolutely the, the right. The way it's transmitted is also the same, as you mentioned. Now, what I'm interested in knowing is that cold and flu symptoms are very common in this current weather. So, how does one know that? How does one know that one has to go and get tested? It's time to get tested for swine flu. Practically speaking, there is not much of a difference between the symptoms which come with this particular virus or with any other strain of influenza A virus. Uh, the thing is that. Ideally speaking, you should get yourself tested only if you have severe respiratory problems, symptoms, if you have fever, if you have uh, breathing difficulty, if you have some other kind of chest infection, or you are immunocompromised, you are a diabetic, or you are elderly, or you are a young child. Ideally, there are conditions where it should be tested, but unfortunately, the panic created is such that anybody and everybody who comes with any kind of a respiratory problem wants to get themselves tested for this particular virus because it is in the air and the news spreads fast and so they come and get themselves tested and by incidental finding also we're able to pick up quite a few cases well, let me take that to dr wali uh, you mm -hmm. know the we've been hearing about swine flu say from 2009 onwards yes. and you know the, you mentioned the panic around it i mean there have been a number of deaths which are reported every year all across the country so i suppose the panic spreads from there what would you say is contributing to the panic and if this is treatable, if this is something that can be treated, then where is the gap? Panic you know? is in the name and I compliment Dr. Dang to say at least a fact that everybody and anybody should not be tested always. So this is from, when he says this, he loses a lot of business. Of so that's actually what's happening. The name, panic is in the name, that is swine. And you have seen recently that what an un unpleasant exchange of words took place because of this name recently in the news. So this is a virus which spreads through the respiratory inhalation or droplet infection, right? But you, de uh, you need to s let the audience know what is happening to our lungs in this weather when this becomes an ambient temperature and things like that. People don't go for exercise for different reasons. People eat, overeat. The diabetics eat sugary things, which is very common in India. Their sugars are high. People do not do any yoga also. Parks, rains. Parks are full of rains or wet. So the condition of the chest, the lungs, becomes relatively unhealthy. At the top of it, because of the change in weather, people do catch other infections. 
patients who are suffering from other diseases also their diseases in case I, I give you example hypertension patient faces winter his blood pressure rises very high so if he doesn't these people are falling yeah. in the high risk category. high risk they are entering in the high risk category so diabetic patients take sweets post diwali everybody's sugar doctor must be seeing rising so all these factors what i mean to convey from your through your channel is keep your lungs healthy otherwise you're going to catch any and every infection including swine flu and swine flu is not a fatal disease it is the comorbidities which are showing very high mortalities which you had just shown I do not deny the fact that these are the deaths with swine flu, but these people may be having other comorbidities like very common in India is tuberculosis, chest infection, bronchiectasis, asthma. So all these comorbidities combined with a people get wet in the rains. One VIP came to me last month. She got wet in the rain. She attended three swearing ins after the election and she had no change of clothes. And then she caught the swine flu. The very alarming identification of swine flu, which I as a clinician find is, we do keep these days oxygen meters. If the saturation is low and patient is having fever for two, three days, four days, then think of swine flu. Second is the cough is very, very typical. Uh, the, the cough doesn't stop with the normal antibiotics. Rather, first few days, one or two days, patient responds to antibiotic, and then it suddenly has a surge. The cough surges, surprisingly the sputum does not come as compared to the cough. So the I'm sudden surge... Sorry to cut surge, you short, Doctor, gee, we already have a caller cough. calling yes. us in Devanjan from Kolkata. Would you go ahead with your question, please? Hello. Hello, Devanjan, Hello. go ahead with your question. Can you hear me? Yes, Devanjan, go ahead with your question. Uh, um, I, I, uh, um, my question is that whether this disease is communicable or not, and another thing is that um, if I use the towels or the toothbrushes of that uh, infected patient, whether I will be affected by swine flu? Yes, it is. Yes, it is very much a communicable disease, like I mentioned by droplet infection. Number two, if you are using towels and handkerchiefs and extra things, or which are contaminated by an infected patients, you are definitely bound to acquire this infection. And here I would like to add one more small thing, in addition to what you have asked that in this season, at least in North India, because of the high level of pollution, also you tend to acquire this infection more frequently. Well, I hope that answers your question, Devanjan. Let's go over to Jaipur, where Dr. Raman Sharma, who is the nodal officer of the government for swine flu cases, he joins us now. Dr. Sharma, you know, there are a lot of newspapers are reporting that the reasons behind the spike in cases of swine flu are the fact that patients have to travel very long distances to seek medical help and there is a lack of la test labs behind um, you know th that is contributing to the rise in these cases what has been your experience sir uh, no uh, uh, we have been observing the trend of swine flu since 2009 and 2010 and every season we see that uh, as the winter peaks we get these cases of swine flu so basically it's a seasonal disease and the the condition is uh, conducive to the viral multiplication and obviously with the onset of winter we are watchful for uh, uprising the number of cases uh, of swine flu during these months and uh, the government is on a war footing to control the disease and the infection as uh, doctor already has uh, mentioned that it's a droplet infection it's really very difficult to control a patient of swine flu to isolate him the best thing i would advise the public is if they are having any ILI, what is known as influenza-like uh, syndrome, influenza-like symptoms, like fever, sore throat, cough, and breathlessness, they should immediately seek a consultation from the doctor, and the doctor would then categorize the, his illness into A, B1, B2, and C, and start the treatment as early as possible. One thing what we forget is, the doctors even forget sometimes, that you have to 
make the patient isolation and he has to be isolated at his home and he has to wear surgical mask or triple layer mask and he has to consult the doctor he has to regularly visit the doctor so that his condition if there is any deterioration that can be assessed by the treating physician dr sharma before i come back to you let's go over to our uh, next caller mr s nagesh from bengaluru please go ahead with your question madam uh, good evening and uh, good evening to the panelists Good My evening. question is that there are several tests which are called as rapid screening tests for influenza which are available outside this country. And uh, in terms of cost, they cost much less than the PCR test which is done classically here in India. Now the, the PCR test takes up to 48 hours for the results to come in. Whereas the turnaround time for the rapid diagnostic test is about a couple of hours. So why are we not having those rapid diagnostic tests? Because we know that time flu becomes kind of ineffective at the end of 72 hours. Why don't we have the rapid test? Uh, Thank you. I suppose you can take the question yes, on the Yes, I think I will take this question. I would like to beg to differ with you. At least in our city, at least in our lab, the turnaround time is just a few hours. Any sample which comes to our lab before 1 o'clock, the report is given the same evening. And the report coming at 3 o'clock is given by about 8 o'clock at night. So we are having putting up two runs, one the morning run and one the afternoon run and all the patients who come are given the report the same evening unless until the patient comes in the evening time then it goes to the next day. Otherwise the turnaround time here at least in the city of Delhi in most of the leading labs is only a few hours, never ever, never ever it is even 24 hours. And no patient has died ever because of the time factor in the reporting, no. Well, uh, before I go back to the doctors on the panel, I would like to remind our viewers that you can call us with your questions on the number that is flashing on your screen. Let's go back to Jaipur to Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma, the former Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje has attacked the Congress government while she was in Jhalawar a few days ago over its failure to tackle the swine flu menace in the state. But if you look at the combined data from 2017 and 2018, it shows that there have uh, been more than 500 deaths in the state due to swine flu during that period. But, you know, I'm not talking about the politics. I don't want to discuss that with you. Politics aside, would you call this a government failure or an administrative failure? Why are there such high number of cases in Rajasthan and what is the government doing about it? No. No, uh, not at all. There is no failure on the part of the government. And uh, as I told you, swine flu has been there since 2009, 2010, and 2015 exactly, was the worst. Exactly, which is why it's which not, it, that one party could not tackle it and the other party could so tackle it. So the government it. is on a... Uh, no, that's not the question of tackling by the parties. It's a question of general public awareness and sure. what the government is doing. The government, uh, the Directorate of Medical Health Services in Rajasthan is on a war footing and is serving the houses. We are uh, educating the public through media, through uh, mass text messages and all those things. So there is uh, no dirt on the part of the government for controlling this infection. By, na by nature, this disease is such that it spreads rapidly. Let's go over to our next caller, Sagar Bhanoth, who joins us from Ambala. Sagar, go ahead with your question. Good evening to all, to the best panel. I need to ask about uh, about the tulsi and other like giloes, which will help for the uh, for the betterment and the cure of, uh, of swine flu. Is it true that tulsi and giloe water will help for the for the uh, for the swine flu? Well, well is looking for holistic or alternative. I had version. a very detailed discussion on another channel when the swine flu broke first time, 2009-2010 also, and with mm, Honorable Ramdev sir. So. He said, this is the treatment. I said, no, this can't be the treatment. It is a viral illness. It's a self-limiting illness. But what Giloy can do to our mouth is very significant, is that it improves the oral hygiene. Okay. Tulsi also gives some kind of immunity. Okay. So this is believable. More preventive. Yes, it is preventive, but it's a hygiene side of the story. Sure. Most of the people don't brush in the morning. They don't brush while going to the dinner, uh, after the dinner to the bed. So the 
poor oral hygiene becomes a nidus for the virus to quickly multiply sure. and this is one of the reasons when the droplets go in through the nose or even through the mouth okay. it can cause the problem okay. so these two things are not denied but they are not the preventive or uh, treatment sure. but it's related to the hygiene okay well it's time to take a short break but I'd like to remind our viewers that they can call us with their questions. We're discussing swine flu and prevention. They can call us on the number that's flashing on your screen. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. We are discussing the rise in the cases of swine flu. Now, remember Rajasthan. The government in Rajasthan has started door-to-door -door screening of people in order to contain this disease. And in just four days, a thousand people have tested positive. We are taking your calls on the number that is flashing on the screen and we have a caller joining us now. Let's go over to Ashish from Mumbai. Hello. Ashish, go ahead, ask a question. Yeah, yeah, I have one question, ma'am. The question is like, ma'am, can I have swine flu without fever? Like if I don't have fever but I have symptoms like sore throat or maybe some other symptom, then can I have swine flu without fever? My question, I don't have fever though. But consistent sore throat or little bit sometimes it's there it goes it comes like but it's quite consistent so that's my question ma'am okay well again the question is about fever may go unnoticed you exactly see, so when does mild, it become yeah. serious enough for the person mild to viral illness you may go to work you may have a fever like the early days of typhoid fever you go to work you don't notice fever so fever is not only uh, the criterion to have swine flu uh, it depends on the reaction of your body and the quantum of infection. But if you get tested positive for the swine flu with or without fever, you have it. So get treatment. That's the okay. short answer to his okay. question. Well, you know, the larger question that I wanted to put to both you doctors was that in a country like India, I mean, you know, with the amount of pressure on the resources that we have in, in, in healthcare, you know, the hospital beds, the medicines, you know, in rural areas, the problem is the distances that people have to travel to get medical, you know, uh, uh, medical care. So would you say that at least in, um, you know, diseases like this, infections like this, prevention is better than cure and should there be more awareness or do you think that there is ample awareness about Well, the one aspect of the awareness they have just told that they are going door to door. So to spot the cases, this is one. But awareness comprises mainly of in this type of flu or influenza that we should create a barrier between the patient and the healthy person. And that's the first thing is distance, maintaining the safe distance, no handshakes. If the person is coughing, general hygiene for coughing like cover your face or don't cough into others. So would you mouth. say precaution better than cure in this case? Yes, yes. I surely agree with you. And with all due respect to all my colleagues and journalists and media, some things are not practical. How is it possible if somebody extends your hand and don't shake the hand? You are going to a movie hall, the same air condition is circulating around. You are traveling by plane, you are traveling by metro, you are in congested areas, you go shopping, you go to a restaurant, you open the door of a place, you are, your hands are on a railing. So all these normal factors also play a large role in spreading the infection. I'm not saying that don't do anything. We should be aware. We should be educated to try and see that we do not spread the infection. Try and see that we clean our do hands. Do you say this is unnecessary panic? Absolutely, Ruby. I will Always. say that this is an absolutely unnecessary panic. Or rather, my take home message will be that even if you test positive, first, do not panic. Number two, go to your doctor and follow the advice of a physician because remember it's like a viral disease it is a viral disease only and a cell limiting virus and it's suggested that treat only when required everybody and anybody should not be injudiciously treated or hospitalized or throwing a tantrum nothing sure. like this well dr dang there saying that this is, there is no need to panic and proper medical procedures should be fo followed people should go to, to their doctors let's go back to dr raman sharma dr sharma now in the door to door screening that the government has started over a thousand people have been tested positive so what is the plan of the government what what are the next steps that the government is going to take to treat these people do you have ample uh, you know, uh, facilities to tackle this? Are you going to increase the uh, places where tests can be conduct conducted? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
the main aim of the government for these door to door surveys to identify what is known as ili influenza like illness now i would uh, like to add that influenza like illness uh, by definition means that the patient has fever of more than 100 degree fahrenheit has sore throat has cough and has running nose so identification of ili and then giving them appropriate treatment and requiring testing wherever necessary is done and the most important as i said uh, the earlier is the measure for home isolation of the patient so he should not go out he shouldn't go out to a cinema hall he shouldn't travel in a public transport go so to how a, realistic to, is uh, that i mean you know sometimes a, people are the only the breadwinners temple, and this is the main strategy but so thank you very much dr sharma and dr dang and dr walid for joining us but we still i l i he has the he has thank you very much it's